Hi, I'm Ian and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. In this three series of videos, I'm going to show you how I planned, processed through creating a mosaic and then processed the final image of both M42 and the Horsehead Nebula. I wanted to get a very widescreen image and therefore I had to plan how to do that across two uh, large uh, frames and then stitch them together. So in this first video, I'm going to show you how I plan that using Telescopius and then downloaded the coordinates into the ASI Air Pro. Um, I'm also going to show you how good those coordinates work with the ASI Air Pro because when it plate solves, it doesn't always get right onto the target. And I'll show you the results from what I did here where I did a couple of test images each time to try and get it as close as possible to the actual target I wanted. The only annoyance was in the second set of images on the Horsehead Nebula, it actually failed to plate solve and therefore I didn't get many exposures. But even so, I'm going to process all of those and run through uh, how I do the entire image. So that's the first of these three episodes. In the second one, I'm going to show you how I actually create the mosaic. And I use three tools. I use, use Image Composite Editor, a Microsoft tool, which is my preferred because you can actually download images straight out of Deep Sky Stacker before you've done any stretching at all and it still merges them. And then you can take them straight into PixInsight, start to stretch them and start to work on the linear and the nonlinear elements. But I'm also gonna show you how you can use PixInsight to create a mosaic or even Photoshop. Although I did find with my particular image, probably because the horse head was so noisy that it didn't actually work with uh, Photoshop. So I'll show you how you do that with uh, an image of M31. So that's episode two. And then in the final third episode, I'm going to show you how I actually process the final widescreen image that I created from that mosaic using PixInsight and Photoshop. And we'll see what the end result's like. Um, even with a noisy side from the Horsehead Nebula, I think we still end up with, I'm pleased with the final image that I get. Um, so we'll see how all that goes. So enjoy and hopefully uh, you'll get some uh, useful information out of this whole process of planning, putting a mosaic together and then processing a mosaic image. So here we are in Telescopius, and I'm just moving from the standard M31 to M42, the Orion Nebula. Uh, you can see I've got it set up from a previous uh, four pane. I'm going to reduce that down to two panes. But there you can see the Orion Nebula and also the Horsehead Nebula, which is what I want. Just check my coordinates of the uh, equipment, 376 millimeters, and there's my sensor. And I'm going to play around with the angle of attack to try and get uh, my sensor angle on the right angle to get uh, these two in. So let's go down from four panes to two. There we go. I've got a 15% overlap. I'm probably gonna change that, but that looks like a good framing. So when the image becomes horizontal, I think that will look really good, having both the Orion and the Horsehead in a single widescreen frame. Um, so let's just play a little bit with the um, overlap. Um, so we could go up to 25, but that doesn't give much room at either end of the image. So I'm probably gonna bring it down I think 15 is too low, 20 is probably about where I want it to be. So let's see if that works. And then in terms of the angle, clearly you can swivel it all around. You've got to leave a little bit of leeway because I'm going to try and get this angle of uh, whatever I end up with here. But when I actually put the camera on, I could be out by a few degrees. So let's see where I settle. I'm probably going to settle around 112, 113. Let's say 113. That looks, I think that looks a pretty good framing. Yeah. No, I like that. I think uh, let's just get it perfectly where I want it to be with a little bit of leeway, as I say, in case the ISA Pro plate solve doesn't get it exactly on the coordinates that I'm going to give it to it. So there we are. So now what I can do is I can actually uh, go in and use those coordinates. I don't need the center one, so I can unclick that. But then I can go in to copy the CSV file, which it now does. And then I can go across into the ASI Air Pro and up in the top where the yellow circle is, you click on that and then you can download your coordinates in there. Up comes this screen, uh, up comes the uh, QWERTY screen, click on where the yellow is again and your coordinates are copied across. Now remember, they're copied different coordinates, so they're not the J2.5 
2000 are the J now coordinates, so they will be different. But then you go into your sequence and you can set up your, your sequence uh, as you like. Here it's just putting some dummy information in for the time being because I'll go back and do a lot more detail on that later to set up how I want to uh, prepare for this uh, image taking. So set those, apply those, and then before you get your panes one and two um, that I want for this image. But let me just show you what I actually ended up doing. So I included an M31 to uh, kill a bit of time before the Orion Nebula came up into my field of view. But I also set up a couple of what I called setup uh, sessions for both M42 and the Horsehead Nebula, just so it would plate solve a couple of times before the main um, image run on M42. And likewise, when that came to an end, do the same thing for the Horsehead Nebula. Two setups, so it would plate solve twice before the main image. Now, unfortunately, when it got to the main image, it didn't actually plate solve um, when it did the meridian flip. So it took two images, did a meridian flip, and then failed to plate solve. So I didn't get many images of the Horsehead Nebula. But here you can see on my setup for the M42, I just did five images at 30 seconds for my setup one. And then if I go across and look at setup two, I did the, the same. You can see I'll just click on that. And I get, again, another five images at 30 seconds. And then it will plate solve each time it does this. So that's why it's useful. And we'll see in a minute how well that plate solving was. And then this is the actual full run where I'm doing uh, 120 seconds for 15, 60 seconds at 75, and 30 seconds at 30, just so I get a range of images because M42, if you want to get some of the detail out, you want a range of short and uh, medium uh, length exposures. And I did exactly the same for the horse head. So I did a setup. This time I did three minutes, uh, two images for my setup one. And then I did a setup two where again I did um, two images at three minutes each and then I was ready to go in to do my, my long main image setting but unfortunately as I said it had to do a meridian flip after two images and then it failed to plate solve again at the end of that meridian flip. So that was a bit annoying so I've only got really six images of the Horsehead Nebula whereas I've got the full uh, image set that I wanted for uh, M42. So what I'm going to probably do is go out another night, we haven't got any clear nights at the moment, and try that all again and get more images of, M of the Horsehead Nebula. So here I am set up for tonight. I'm going to try a couple of targets. I'm just going to practice uh, on the Lion Nebula, a new target which I haven't done before. I think it's SH2-132. And then actually what I'm going to try and do, my main target is a mosaic of both the Orion Nebula M42 together with the Horsehead Nebula in one shot. So it's going to be quite difficult to get uh, this right and it very much depends on getting the right angle of my lens and I think this is what I'm trying to get. So it should be between 110 and 115 and I think that's the kind of angle that I want. If you look at the back of my uh, ASI 294 MC Pro. So we'll see that how that goes but everything else is set up. So it's early evening. We may not get a good night tonight, we don't know, but uh, we'll see. And I'll come back later and show you how things are progressing. So as you can see, it's the uh, Evo Star 72 ED with the focal reducer on. So 376 um, millimeters of focal length. On top of that is the ZWO um, guide scope uh, with uh, 280 focal, 280 meter, millimeters of focal length. Uh, the SI120 uh, mm guide camera. Uh, I've also got within the filter drawer, I've got the Optolon uh, L Extreme filter, and obviously, all of this being managed by my good old ASI Air Pro. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and all of that sits on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. So, it looks like we might have a good evening tonight. So, I have all this set up, I have a cable coming out. Uh, and then I put all the wiring and I cover it over for the dew that we might get uh, through the night. Um, and obviously I've got all my dew straps on already and actually already up and running because we're getting close to 4.30 now. So getting time to uh, start imaging in about hopefully maybe an hour and a half's time. Um, so let's see how we go. So here's the first image, the M42 setup one that you can see up here. And I put it through astrometry net and you get the coordinates, which I'm going to show you in a minute, the full summary. And it actually showed I came out of 117 degrees, um, not 113. So I was slightly off, but only four, which I'm pretty happy with. And that should be good. And here's the setup two. 
uh, exactly the same as before, though the corners are slightly different, um, which is interesting. And then here's the full uh, M42, the final one I took. This is the one of the 60 second versions. So again, you put all these through and it gives you the coordinates, which is really useful. And then you can summarize how accurate that is to the actual ones you put into the ASIO Pro. And then here was the first setup I did, one of the three minute exposures for the uh, Horsehead Nebula. Again, with its coordinates down the right hand side, again, confirming that we're still at obviously 117 because I haven't touched the, uh, the sensor, the camera angle. Here's uh, setup two of the Horsehead Nebula. Again, put it through and get the uh, revised coordinates. It's slightly different each time um, because it plate solves between each of those, which is really useful, which is why I've done two setups to try and get better plate solving for the final image, which we'll see that summary in a second. And here's the final one, um, again, the coordinates and again, 117 degrees. So it's useful to put all those images through astrometry to get a view of exactly what actually did get uh, taken. So here's a summary of all of the images that I took. And going through here, at the start, this is what I actually had in Telescopia. So these were my settings. And it was using the J2000 coordinate set and gave me these RA and DEC uh, coordinates. For the Orion pane and for the second pane, the horse head, it gave me these uh, RA and DEC coordinates. And then when I took that across into the ASI Air Pro, it converted them to the JNOW coordinates. And you can see they obviously changed because of that to these ones. And then, of course, the only next time I can really uh, test and see what the coordinates are is once I've taken the images. And on the images that I was uh, showing just now, you can see that because um, under the astrometry, they go back to the J2000, they should move back to being closer to the original telescopius. And you can see here, whilst it moved one minute and five seconds from the J2000 to the J now, uh, it moved 52 seconds back to get back to the J2000. So it wasn't quite the same, but that's probably not to do with the calculation. It's to do with how accurate is the ASI Air Pro in positioning the actual image to the target that you want to set it. And we can see here that um, it moved both the RA and the deck pretty close back to what it had moved from uh, Telescopius to the ASI Air Pro in both panes, in both the Orion and the Horsehead uh, Nebula panes. So the deck on this one was slightly a bit more out, but the deck doesn't have quite as big a significance. And then what I've shown here is the results of that, now all in the J2000. So for my setup one and my setup two for each pane, and then the final run I was doing for each, I'm comparing those to the original Telescopius one. And this is what I was trying to get in J2000 from Telescopius. And this is what I actually got in each of those setup one, setup two, and the final panes. And you can see they're pretty close. So they're not dead on, but they're pretty close. So setup one, only 13 uh, seconds out on the RA and seven on the deck. Uh, and for the uh, pane two, four out on the RA and 58 on the deck. So the deck a bit higher there. But as I went through to the setup two, that improved. So this got a little bit better on the RA. If you look over here, and whilst the, the deck got a bit worse, over here, not much in it. Again, not too much in it. So fairly consistent between setup one and setup two. By the time it did the third plate solve, which was for the final run, again, this was pretty accurate on the RA, not quite so on the deck. But here, it was a bit more accurate, both on the... RA and the deck overall. So it probably paid me to do more than one setup. So what I'd experienced before was if you just do the first setup, you can be a bit more out. And therefore I was testing whether or not doing one or two setups got it more accurate to my original uh, telescopious uh, framing I wanted. Now the other thing to watch out for was the angle of my sensor. So I was uh, planning a 113 angle. And the way I actually set up my uh, camera I ended up, uh, according to astrometry, getting a 117. So I was pretty close, and in testing my field of view, that was in the tolerance to still get the image that I wanted within the field of view. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think what it probably says to me is, I probably don't need to do two setups. I probably might want to do just a one setup, take a couple of images, and then move on to my full image. It, it clearly says that 
it isn't 100% accurate to um, what you originally put into the ASI Pro. And that's because, as we've said in a previous video, the ASI Pro has a tolerance. It doesn't actually go exactly to the uh, final seconds. The key thing to note is that if it's out on the RA significantly by, say, a minute or significant seconds, that can have quite a big uh, impact on, on where it's positioned. Whereas on the deck, that's not quite so uh, so uh, big. It's more tolerant because we're looking at 24 uh, hours here versus 60 degrees. So there's uh, a lot more movement. So here, the final ones, there's fairly little movement. And the, the closeness of the actual RA gives me a lot of comfort that I'm going to get the image very close to what I originally had set it in Telescopius. So I hope that's helpful. And I hope that kind of shows you the, the outcome of actually using uh, the ASI Air Pro in its planning mode and what you can achieve if you uh, try and do uh, two or three plate solves within planning using what I call a setup one, setup two, before you do your final full run uh, for each of the panes. Join me in part two and three to show you how I created this mosaic and how I produced some of these images.